the mechanism, the psychological mechanism of real compassion is to understand that we're not, when we're caught up in persona ego, when we're acting out of our own karma, out of conditioning, we're not responsible. In, in other words, if my parent or my somebody in my uh, or past experience harmed me, if I understand their true motivation was out of conditioning, out of their karma, I don't blame them in particular. I can see that they were caught up. They're caught up just like I'm, I was caught up in, in yeah. that experience of conditioning, of karma, of expressing that frustration or the anger, whatever is going on with them. And that absolves them really of, of their sin. Essentially. Almost like you have compassion. You're, you're cultivating compassion for your own self to be free of the anger or the resentment toward that person. But then they're, you're also freeing them. It's like you're, and you're working on your own self-compassion for when you make a mistake. I remember one time I felt really guilty about an exchange I had with someone and I talked to you about it and I'm like, ah, I could have, should have said this, you know, me and my <laughs> obsession. I should have said this. I shouldn't have said that. I'm a, you know, you know, a good person would have done differently. And you said to me, Debbie, you acted exactly as you needed to because it gave you such a lesson in, um, in, in just something you needed to see. And it just freed all of that pressure when you told me that i said this happened like 10 years ago i remember thinking like a load had been lifted off of me because when we do something or someone accuses us of being a bad person we tend to want to fight it like you could feel your ego trying to defend mm. it and then beating and then even self-punishment and regret and we could spend our whole life in regret and it's just a terrible state in your mind to be in and so when i was able to like say okay well this really got me to a point to see a part of my shadow uh, I free her from, you know, her judgment or whatever she was going through. I understand she was acting out of conditioning. And then I'm free. They're free. And it, it just it's just a better way to do it than the old way, which is put them in the, in the stock <laughs> uh, stockade in the, in the center of a town, throw, throw food at them or uh, punish them publicly in some way. Or even now they talk about the social media being the the the, uh, the 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 kind of town hall of shame for everyone who does something bad. God forbid you do something and then it gets viral on the internet. So it's like, how can we create a more compassionate culture is if we let go of this idea that we always have to be such a good person. It sounds so weird, right? That we shouldn't want to have to be a good person. We should cultivate the desire to always do no harm but not be attached to our personality being seen and known as good. Would yeah. that be a good way to think about it? Yeah, yeah. The, the great uh, philosopher Lao Tse, uh, the Tao Te Ching, says, when you define goodness, you're defining badness. Uh, yeah. You're giving birth to badness already because you're, you're creating that split. You're mm -hmm. saying this behavior is good, Therefore, even if you don't mention the bad, just by defining something as good, you're implying that there is a badness already. There's the, the two sides of the coin. Yes. And, and so that dual uh, nature of our existence is always playing out. And, and Jung is simply pointing out that if you're not aware of that duality, then you're, you're going to be blindsided by the opposite side of the coin, right? The shadow. Mm 